and good evening and welcome to our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. I am certainly grateful to God for Him blessing you and uh, allowing you to join us here on tonight. We are excited about the Word of God that we are going to uh, look at on this evening. I want you to get your Bibles and journey with us to the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to look at tonight um, uh, two verses, Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to look at two verses uh, here on tonight. Uh, we want to look there at verse, uh, verse number 20 and verse number 21, that is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 20 and verse 21. Listen at what the Word of God says, and I'm reading this to you from the English Standard Version of God's Holy and Divine Word. Here it is. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, uh, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Um, that is the word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be unto God. That is the 43rd chapter uh, from the book of Isaiah, uh, verses 20 and 21. Let's take our Bibles or your electronic devices, whatever it is that cont cont uh, contains your, uh, your version of God's holy and divine word. And let's uh, make our statement of faith. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I can have what it says that I can have. I can be what it says I can be, and I can do what it says I can do. Uh, amen, amen, and amen. Uh, listen, uh, we want to get right into this Word of God. We've been teaching, again, about the believer's hope, and we've, uh, uh, we've dropped anchor in the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And, and tonight we're going to just lift up two verses, verse number 20 and verse number 21, um, in our in our time together here tonight during our triumphant Tuesdays in the word and we're going to look at these two verses 43rd chapter of Isaiah verse 20 verse 21 and tonight I want to focus or label our our controlling thought for these two verses um, that we were formed to give him praise we were formed to give him praise as believers we were form to give him praise. We have hope and this hope leads us to a place and a point um, in our lives where we recognize that we've been formed um, to give God praise. These two, these, two, uh, these two verses, they are sandwiched, uh, book in, um, um, in verse number 20 uh, with the word honor and then verse number 21, um, it talks about praise. Verse 20, honor, verse 21, praise. They are sandwiched, book in with the words honor and praise. And when you begin to break down this, these two verses, and as we talk about the believer's hope, we arrive at the section that takes and it points, um, it points that there will be and is reason for the believer to praise God. It points out that there is reason for the believer to praise God. We note here, uh, when looking at verse number 20, what we take and we note um, is that there is a blessing, when you look at it, there is a blessing in being connected to those who are connected to God. There is a blessing in being connected, being connected to those who are connected to God. Verse 20 says that the wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, um, um, they will take and um, give honor to him for I give water in the wilderness and rivers rivers it says in um, in in the desert in this salvation oracle um, it, it takes and it identifies a praise that takes and it comes from it comes from animals it comes from animals in the text and and, and we can conclude and draw out uh, ways that animals give God praise, um, but don't miss out on the inference in this text. Um, it, it's talking about the the animals, but but it, it, it when you look at it, um, the the poet, or rather the uh, the the prophet, rather, um, takes and um, 
um, utters the words that God's give to him to these people in a very poetic form. And in this poetic form, um, God takes and he says um, to, to, to these people, um, and he lets them know um, that those who are connected to you are going, um, going to going to be blessed because of you. Why do we see that? Why do we see that? Now, he's not merely talking about animals in the text. Um, he, he says and he shows us here, saints of God, um, that that they are that the blessing in being connected to those who are connected to God is that God takes and he makes the uninhabitable, he makes it inhabitable. He makes the uninhabitable inhabitable. Look at the text again. God says that I'm going to give water in the wilderness and I'm going um, to take and to give um, rivers uh, rivers in uh, in the desert, he takes and he takes that which is uh, which is uninhabitable, and now God makes it inhabitable. The animals in this particular passage of scripture, um, which were which were suffering because of a lack or because of their geographical location, the text tells us that because they were they were they were suffering because of where they were geographically located in the wilderness. They were they were suffering because of a lack in the wilderness. God says that I'm going to give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And the 20th verse begins by saying that these animals which were living in this uh, uninhabitable place, God now is going to transform it and make it an inhabitable place. The question becomes, why in the text did these animals uh, honor God? Let's stay with me because it's not just talking about animals now. Why did these animals in the text honor God? It was due, my brothers and sisters, to God transforming the uninhabitable into the inhabitable. Can I... Can I tell you here that enveloped in the text talking about these animals which were living in an uninhabitable place, but now it is a, ha a habitable place. Uh, uh, it is an inhabitable place because God transformed it. And the text says that these animals that they now honor God, can I tell you that enveloped in that, um, it, it, it embodies the essence uh, of when it says, um, the song that used to say, uh, you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. In, in essence, these animals that were in this uninhabitable place, they knew what it felt like to live in the wilderness. They knew what it felt like to live in an uninhabitable place. But God says that I am going um, to make water um, to, to come and be in the wilderness and I'm going to make rivers. Now to take and to flow um, into the desert, he takes and he trans he divinely um, transforms um, the wilderness and the desert uh, from an uninhabitable place to an inhabitable inhabitable place. It, here, here it is: the animals they are honoring God, and, and in essence, um, if you've never been in my shoes and have never had to deal with what I had to deal with, live with what I've had to live with, go through what I have had to go through, you would not understand my praise. You would understand the reason why I weep. You would under understand the reason why I shout. You would understand the reason why I read my Bible. You would not understand the reason why I pay my tithe and my offering. You wouldn't understand why I lift up holy hands. You would not understand why I make the sacrifices that I make. You would not understand um, why I do the things 
things I do for the kingdom of God, unless like these animals in the text, unless you have lived what I have had to live through, unless you've gone <laughs> through what I've had to go through, unless you have weep the way I've had to weep, unless you've had to mourn the way that I've had to mourn. And now God shows up in my wilderness. He shows up um, in, in my desert place and he transforms it. Can I pause and also put this in parenthetically? I may, I may have already ran out of parentheses, but can I tell you, saints of God, as I hear the Holy Spirit speaking, can I tell you um, that God is going to show up in your wilderness? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, he is going to show up in your wilderness and he's going to trans form your wilderness and your desert place but here it is when he does it like the text says these animals these wild animals the jackals and the ostrich um they are going to honor god just as they honored god because god had transformed their wilderness and their desert place watch this don't you allow somebody else to dictate and to try to determine to you how much it takes to praise god they can't tell you it don't take you raising your voice lifting up your hands shouting around Running around your home, logging in on Facebook on a triumphant Tuesday night, sitting there dialed in on the phone on a Sunday morning to hear the worship experience. And they're telling you that it does not take all of that. The devil is a liar. If you have not had to go through what I've had to go through, worry like I've had to worry, cry like I've had to cry, weep like I've had to weep, mourn like like I've had to mourn. Wait, how long I have had to wait. You don't understand because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Let's go further here in this text. Getting excited just there in that 20th verse because here it is again. You don't understand. You can't understand unless you have experience living in this uninhabitable place. And God now shows up. And God says, basically, that here it is, these wild animals who've had to live in the wilderness, these wild animals who've have had to live in the desert. I'm getting ready to change. I'm getting ready to change the wilderness into and the desert. I'm getting ready to transform it from that which was uninhabitable, that which was un unbearable. I'm getting ready to transform form it and I'm going to make it inhabitable. I'm going to make it bearable. Listen, if you've ever had to live your life um, um, with, in some unbearable moments in your life, and here's a word tonight where God says that, listen, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to transform it. And in him transforming it, he says that these wild animals, because they have had to live in that which was uninhabitable, habitable, they're going to now, they're going to now honor, they're now going to honor God. The animals in this text, the animals in this text, then I'm talking just about animals. Um, stay with me here. You, you, you'll, get, you'll get it at the end. Um, stay with me here. But the animals in the text also, also is an inference um, um, to um, to indirect blessings. Watch this. They are wild animals. And, and here in the text, the 20th verse, when you read it, um, it says um, that I'm, I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen, my chosen people. Um, the text um, is speaking that, watch this, that, that God sends, he sends water to his chosen people who are in the wilderness. He sends water to his chosen people who are who are in the desert. And 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 when he when he when he sends this water um, to them, and I pick that up later on about this chosen people and being in the wilderness in the desert. But but when he but when he but I can't get past these animals who are honoring God. Um, but God is sending water to his to his um, to his chosen people um, who are in the wilderness and 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 he he gives them so much don't miss it he gives them so much don't miss it he gives them so much don't miss the overflow he gives that's it don't he gives
gives them so much until it overflows, uh, until, until wild animals, watch this, they are blessed because of the abundant blessing that God gives to his people while they are in the wilderness. Oh, bless the holy name of our Lord and our Savior. Oh, bless his holy name because when God blesses you, child of God, can I tell you that when God blesses you, that God does not only bless you with enough, but God blesses you with more than enough. I wish I had somebody who could type that right down inside of the comment section. I wish that there was somebody who could pick up their phone and text a friend, text a neighbor, tell them that the reverend is on the television, tell them that the reverend is on tonight and he has a word that lets us know that watch this, that when God blesses, that God does not only bless you with enough, but he blesses you with more than enough. Those of you that are savvy watching us on Facebook, if you know how to do that high five emoji, you need to put that high five emoji right there. I'm just throwing up some hands of praise, just praising God's name because the text is helping us to see that in this here passage of scripture that the reason why the animals are, 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 are honoring God in the text, watch this, because God has blessed his people with an abundant overflowing blessing and this overflowing blessing it has blessed them so much so until it overflows until wild people those watch this wild animals those who are in close proximity and close contact with you are going to be blessed because of you I wish y'all were hearing me here it is. Let me tell you why it is important and significant when we look at these animals. I'm reminded of a story that unfolded in the Bible during the days of David when he was king. Um, the Philistines, the Philistines, some say the Philistines, the Philistines, uh, they had... Uh, they had secured the Ark of the Covenant. I don't have time to go through what the Ark of the Covenant is. The Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of God. Uh, and you read it in 2 Samuel, chap chap 2 Samuel chapter number 6, uh, verses 1 through 5. After David had overthrown the, uh, overthrown the Philistines, um, David uh, secured the Ark of the Covenant. And David was on his way back to bringing the Ark of the Covenant uh, to Jerusalem. The Ark of the Covenant, it was placed on a cart and it was being carried by oxen and they were celebrating and they were shouting. And as they were transporting the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, the oxen who were pulling the cart, um, they stumbled and uh, uh, Uzzah, Uzzah, spelled U-Z-Z-A-H, Uzzah, um, placed his hand to prevent the ark from, um, from falling um, because of the oxen stumbling. The Bible says that God was angered and he struck him dead. Now that's a whole nother Bible study for a whole nother day and time. But David, as the story goes on, David was afraid and David being afraid of the Lord, he took and turned aside on the trip and had them to place the Ark of the Covenant in Obed Edom's house. The Bible says, and that's that book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says that while the Ark of the Covenant was there, it, it was there for like a three month period, while it was there, that Obed Edom was blessed. But don't miss this, uh, that not only does the Bible tells us that Obed-Edom was blessed, but Obed-Edom and everybody in Obed-Edom's house was blessed. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, can I tell you that watch this, that this is what we are also witnessing here, my brothers and my sisters. We are witnessing here, brothers and sisters, uh, the power of the believer to bless those 
those who are in connection with them. Have you ever noticed that there are those folks that are not saved, that are in close proximity to you, that because God blesses you, that they find themselves blessed as well? That's why those people that are living in your household, you have it where daddy goes to church, but mama does not go to church. Children don't go to church, but because daddy is a praying man, the entire household is blessed as well. This is the abundant overflow blessing that we see here in the passage of scripture. He provided water for his children who were in the wilderness. And because he was providing water for his children who were in the wilderness, the wild animals, they were blessed as well. Here it is. God is blessing his people. And the reason why your household is blessed is because God, like in the text, uh, he is providing you water in the wilderness and everybody in the household is blessed. Uh, some of our children need to recognize that, uh, that the only reason why they are blessed and the only reason why they're doing good in their life is because God has blessed mama, blessed daddy, and the blessing blessings are overflowing to them but not only not only do we know this the blessing that the believer the power of the believer to bless those that are connected to them the bible teaches us when one reads in proverbs 11 and verse number 25 that whoever brings blessings will be enriched and the one who waters will himself be watered the bible also teaches us in luke chapter 12 Verse 48, to whom much is given, much will be required. God blesses us with an overflow blessing until, like in the text, the jackals and those ostriches in the text, the ostrich, uh, they were also blessed because God was blessing his people who were in the wilderness. Can I tell you? Sometimes... God, he takes and he uses others to bless others. Sometimes God uses others. He uses the believer to be a blessing to the other persons. Sometimes he blesses you in order to bless somebody else. Sometimes we witness that as it talks in the text about the wild animals. Sometimes God uses um, the believer to bless the unsaved so that the unsaved, here it is, um, will, will, will take and come and recognize that the reason why they are blessed is because your God has blessed you. Don't miss it. He'll use us, the believer, to bless an unbeliever. And the unbeliever will recognize that the reason why they receive goods from you is because God has been good to the believer. Yes, saints of God, note in the text, don't miss it. God took and provided for his chosen people who were in the wilderness, it says there, and opens up in verse number 20 that the wild beasts are going to honor him. Listen, read the text. He did not send water because of the wild beast, but he sent water because of his chosen people. Oh, bless his name. And because of his chosen people being blessed of God, we see and we witness that the wild beasts are blessed because his people are being blessed by God. Note in the text. Don't miss it. Note in the text, the provision, the place of the provision. Here it is. The people, they were in the wilderness in verse number 20, the B clause. It says, I give water in the wilderness. Understand this about the wilderness, the wilderness um, and the desert, as it says in the text. In the Bible is often um, used metaphorically and it derives um, its metaphorical meaning um, from its physical meaning, allow me to say that, say that again, um, uh, the wilderness and the desert in the Bible, um, it is often used metaphorically and, and it develops its metaphorical meaning from, from its physical meaning. Um, two words, um, 
typically describes or, or descriptors. The, 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 the desert and the wilderness are two words, um, two words that are typically descriptive of a rocky, dry wasteland. Let me say that again. The wilderness and the desert are two words that are typically descriptive of, of, a, of a desert, of a dry place, a rocky place, a wasteland. Um, they they typically um, in the wilderness in in the desert they typically don't don't they they typically don't get rain it rain comes um, intermittently or infrequently they normally don't get they don't get any rain it's a dry place um, this here place um, the wilderness and the desert um, it is an uninhabitable place um, Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter two and verse number six. Jeremiah, he takes and he describes the wilderness as such. Jeremiah describes the wilderness and he says that the wilderness um, it is a land of deserts and pits. It is a land of drought and deep darkness. Uh, it is a land that none passes through where no man, where no man dwells. Here, our text, it takes and it identifies that these wild animals as well as God's chosen people are in the wilderness. And despite the wilderness being dry, despite the wilderness being uninhabitable, despite the wilderness being a wasteland, despite the wilderness being a place of deserts and pits, despite the wilderness being a place of drought and deep darkness, despite the wilderness being a place um, that, that none pass through, look at what happens in the text. God provides. Yes, despite the wilderness being uninhabitable, a dry place, despite the wilderness uh, being a dark and desperate place, the text shows us that God provides. Let me see somebody type that down inside of the, of the comment section that God will provide. The text, it takes and it reminds us of the power of God to take and to pierce and to penetrate a provisionless place and provide. Let me say that again. God is on display here. His power is on display that in a provisionless place, uh, God is able to pierce it and penetrate and still provide. That is reason to shout. That is reason to rejoice because it lets us know that no matter where you are located, that it cannot stop God from providing for you. God can provide for you even in the midst of your provision less place. Look at these chosen people who are in the wilderness, these chosen people who are in the wilderness and note how the C clause of verse uh, verse 20 says, um, to give um, drink to my chosen people. Note how he says they are my chosen people. He says, he says they are my chosen people, but yet I give drink to my chosen people. Can I tell you what I saw here in the text? The fact that they are his chosen people, they are told they're his chosen people. Can I tell you that God looked beyond their fault and he supplied their need. I won't take and bore you tonight with talking to you about how they are in this captivity. They are in this wilderness because of their own doing. But here, God, a couple of things. God, number one, he still calls them his chosen people <laughs> and he still supplies their need. So look at this. Watch this. Two dynamics are taking place in the text. He calls them his chosen people, although they had messed up. They, they, they could not, um, where they were located, here it is, where they are located, thank you, Holy Spirit, where they are located, it did not change their identity. Somebody ought to praise his name. Where they are located did not change their identity. Where you are located does not define who you are, but whose you are defines you. He says, my chosen people, my, my chosen people, they are in a wilderness place and in captivity, but yet God still identifies with them. They are still his chosen people. 
People may cut you off. Friends may cut you off. Family may cut you off. Folks may say you're no good. Church members may not be able to be found. Pastor may even be busy, but thanks be unto God that when you belong to God, that you are still his. No matter the context, no matter the trouble, no matter the pain, you are still God's chosen people. But look at the text. He looks beyond their faults and God takes and he supplies their need. Can I tell you what I see right here, my brothers and my sisters? I see in this passage of scripture and in God providing their need. I see a couple of things taking place. I see the extraordinary magnitude of grace. Grace, my brothers and sisters, the extraordinary magnitude of grace. And when you look at the passage of scripture in him taking and giving them water in the desert, I see my brothers and my sisters, the extraordinary magnitude of grace. Grace takes and gives to you what you do not deserve. Lord, have mercy. This is the extraordinary magnitude of grace. He gives to them water in their desert, in their wilderness. But then don't, don't, don't miss this. Not only was grace the extraordinary magnitude of grace on display, but then we get another seismic shock because in him giving them water, water signifying life, he interrupts their wilderness. He interrupts their desert. And then God takes and he gives them water. He gives them water. He he interrupts wilderness, dark, desert place. He interrupts their wilderness. He interrupts a place of struggle. He interrupts a place that has no provisions and he provides. He interrupts, he interrupts, he interrupts what should and could have happened to them. Here is the seismic shock that not only does grace show up, but then mercy is right behind her. Not, not only does grace shows up, grace gives to them what they do not deserve, gives them water. But then watch this. Death is what they deserve. And so here's the seismic shock. Although they did not deserve the water and they deserve they deserve death in not deserving the water. God gives grace and gives them the water. The water provides them with life in a place where they were they were destined to die and it interrupts death and gives them life. That's mercy, brothers and sisters. Grace is the providing of the water. And then when the water comes and it gives them water to drink, the water takes and interrupt the process of dying and the water interrupting the process of dying shows us the seismic shock of how mercy will also show up. Somebody ought to shout and praise God because you not only have received the grace of God in your life, but you also receive God's mercy. Good God Almighty, God will not only give you grace and give you what you do not deserve, but then he'll give you mercy and mercy will keep from you what you do deserve. That's when the church of old used to talk about, I should have been dead and gone. I should have been sleeping in my grave, but God, he made death to go away and behave. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you that that is nothing more than mercy. We should have been wiped out a long time ago, should have been counted out. Should, there's a whole lot of should have's that should have happened in our life and could have happened in your life. But God put mercy on our tab. And when he put mercy on our tab, it kept from us what we do deserve. Lord, have mercy in this house on today. Lord, have mercy in this house on today. Let me let me move to a close because perhaps I'm boring you on tonight and and you're really not seeing what I see in this text. But look at what happens. He says in verse number 21, and I'll begin to take my clothes on tonight. Verse 21, God says in the text, um, um, I, I'm going to give the people whom it's the people whom I have formed for myself that they might declare my praise. Here, here the people are. He says, I have formed these people. I've created these people for myself. We, we were created, brothers and sisters, the text is helping us to see that we were created to praise him. We were, we were, we were created um, to praise, to praise him. I, I want to lift up this part 
um, when he says, he says in the text, in the latter part of, of verse number 21, watch, watch what he says in the latter parts of verse 21, your Bible is open, he says here, he says, watch it, he says, to declare my praise. Why is that of great significance? Here it is. It is of great significance, my brothers and my sisters, because remember, they are receiving water in the wilderness. <laughs> they are receiving, it's a river in the, in the desert. <laughs> Don't miss it. Then verse 21 then comes around and it says to declare my praise. Don't 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 miss it. They, they're 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 receiving water in the wilderness rivers in the desert. Verse 21 ends by saying to declare my praise. Can I tell you and suggest to you that this praise that they speak of in verse number 21, it is not a praise that happens when you get out of the desert. It is not a praise that when you get out of the wilderness, it is not a praise that happens when you come out. It is not a praise that when God sets you free, but this is a praise that takes place while you are still in your wilderness, because while you are still in your wilderness, you realize that you could have died in your wilderness. Man, I'm supposed to be teaching, but Lord have mercy. I feel a preach right about here. While you are in your wilderness, God kept on making a way. While you were in your wilderness, God kept on giving you strength. While you were in your your wilderness he kept on putting food on your table while you were shedding your tears he kept on giving you strength while you were being lied on he kept on making a way while doors were being closed in your face God kept on providing for you and I wonder in here on tonight is there anybody under the sound of my voice that can shout on a Tuesday night uh, that I thank God that while I was in my wilderness uh, the Lord he kept on providing for me and if you're not ashamed if you're not embarrassed, if you're not ashamed to share, somebody ought to text it. Somebody ought to type it that the Lord kept on making a way for me while I was in my wilderness. I've been made to give God praise. I've been made to praise him for every morsel on my table. I've been made to praise him for every garment that has been put on my back. I've been made to praise him for for every door that he has opened and I'm not going to wait until I come out of the wilderness. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to wait until he makes a way out of no way. Oh, no, I am not. I am not going to wait until God delivers me. I'm not going to wait until he mends my broken heart. I'm not going to wait until he dries my weeping eyes. I got to leave you all here tonight and tell you farewell, but child of God, I need to put this in your spirit that you, because you have hope, that you need to recognize that you were created to praise God's name in the midst of COVID-19, getting ready for an election in August and November, in the midst of hearing divisive words coming from the federal government, in the midst of brothers and sisters uh, seeing all of the protests and the upheaval in the land, in the midst of the numbers steady rising with infections from the COVID-19. We ought to be like Job and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In the midst of all that we go through, we ought to open up our mouths and give God some praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh glory, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we will praise you we will honor you, God. Father, for you keep on blessing us, making ways out of no way, Lord. And God, we are forever grateful. And Lord, forgive us of those times and those moments, Lord, where we have not opened up our mouths and praise you. But Lord, we declare that we'll open up our mouths and we'll give you praise. Uh, we pray that you get honor. We pray that you get glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, let me thank you for joining us tonight uh, with our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Listen, I want to encourage you. Um, to continue to support our ministry um, through the various ways of giving, through timely texting to give, uh, by going on our, our church's website. I want to encourage you 
um, to, to take full advantage and, and continue to bless God through the Mount Sinai uh, Baptist Church here in Miami, Florida. Thank you to all of our friends and our family um, locally, as well as those throughout the nation who are watching. I want to always encourage you that uh, when you see us going live on our various platforms, that you would like as well as share. Like as well as share. We thank you for joining us here tonight. Join us again on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock a.m. for our virtual worship. We thank God for, uh, for each of you. We want to pray that you would stay safe, stay healthy, wear your mask, do your social distancing, do your due diligence in doing your part to help us to defeat COVID-19 and, and, and stop the spreading of this virus. Please, ma'am, please, sir, do your part. Uh, also, I, I do believe that there may be a seat or two that may still be available for our summer camp. They're still having the summer camp and we have uh, social distance and limited the amount of kids. They're wearing masks and gloves and sanitizing. Listen, I wanna encourage you, dear hearts, um, that if you uh, need a safe place for your child, I emphasize a safe place for your child. Please, ma'am, please, sir, dial the number that will come across the screen, 305-751-5846 for more information. And then we invite us uh, to come back and join us again, 7 o'clock p.m. virtually for our Triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Join us 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, pray for all of us. We are all now on the official sick and shut in list. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay prayed up. I love you in Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Peace. God bless you.